So, Bill Strauss, how long were you in the Sea Organization? I was in the Sea Organization from the third of 23 and a half years. And was that mostly on how many years on free ones? 16 years on the free ones. 16 years on the ship. For the Sea Organization, you had a blood transfusion at the Free Winds home port, Curacao. That's Tell right. me what happened. Okay, I had a bleeding ulcer, lost a lot of blood, and they took me to the hospital and they gave me blood transfusions. You have always felt that the blood transfusion in Curacao gave you the AIDS virus, is that right? It has to be, because uh, you can only get it from through blood and through sex. The only two people I had sex with the whole time I was in the SO were my two wives, and they were both sent off for testing before I even found out I was positive, and they tested negative. Okay. I didn't get it from them. So, the blood transfusion. Now, the for 13 years, no treatment of that, is that correct? No treatment. And you were sighting, going downward. Right. I'd go to the doctor, and she said, oh, you've been working hard, you got, you know, you got to get more sleep, which is impossible when you're in the SO. Is it fair to say that the Sea Organization executives knew you had AIDS and withheld that and kept it secret from you? No, I don't think they had AIDS. They thought I had AIDS because the instant they found out, they, I was on the next plane out of there. Oh, so they, they didn't even tell me I had AIDS. along getting more and more tired right and had no treatment for AIDS that's right and then they send you to Dr. Denk in Los Angeles exactly okay what did he say he said I walked into his office he was sitting behind his desk and he looked up sadly and he said they didn't tell you did they Scott for a while you and Bill Strauss were fellow shipmates and Sea Org members on the free wings Yes, absolutely. And Bill, you would consider a friend of yours, correct? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was my best buddy in the Sea Org. Oh. He's still my best buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was there when uh, <clears throat> Bill developed a, uh, a bleeding ulcer in 1989. Bill's a hemophiliac. Hemophiliac is missing the coagulant factors in their blood that makes the blood clot when you get a cut or a wound or something. Uh, so for a hemophiliac, a bleeding ulcer is a, literally a life and death situation. It's an emergency. So he was sent to the hospital in Curacao, and uh, during that time uh, he received some transfusions and also the, the uh, missing coagulant factor that his, his body doesn't make. And uh, in one or the other, uh, the HIV virus was was present. So Bill got HIV from that. However, he didn't know that at the time. And uh, over the subsequent years, the disease progressed uh, with the onset of symptoms of severe fatigue, um, dramatic weight loss. Um, he developed shingles, which is an extremely painful condition. Um, they sent me to a hospital in Nassau for some tests. They didn't tell me what tests they were, I was being tested for. And then they called up Dink and told him, told him that I was tested positive for HIV. They didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the guts to tell me to my face. They told Dr. Dink to tell me. Mm -hmm. At the time, uh, it was considered a death sentence because they hadn't really developed uh, the antiretroviral treatment that was that was still experimental at the time, you know, and the treatment that they had at the time was, uh, uh, you know, it was deadly in itself. AZT it would poison your liver. After seeing Dr. Denk, mm -hmm. I believe you were told to go see a chiropractor in Northern California called James Kepler. Kepler knew you had AIDS. Absolutely. From Dr. Day? Yes. And what was his treatment? He's a long-term OT7, OT8 Scientologist. So what was his treatment of you since you had the AIDS virus? He uh, took x-rays of my back. He adjusted my back. He had some physical therapists working with me. And he gave me some herbs. 
So for the AIDS virus, you've got back adjustments and herbs. Yeah, and he had some some uh, weird laser therapy or something going on. What year was this, Bill? This was in 2002. I see. So basically, they were keeping the AIDS adjudication in-house, meaning that they stayed with loyal OT7 Scientologist Dr. Denk and Dr. Kepler. Absolutely, and I know for a fact that Kepler, instead of getting paid in cash, was getting accommodations on his Freeman's account. Oh, as payment for my service, for, sir, for treating me. And Bill's wife was still being held hostage on the ship. And uh, for six months. But since my wife was being held against her will on the ship, I left Kepler after, you know, two or three months. I was living in his house. I came down here to, to see IJC, to, uh, the International Justice Chief, to try to get my wife released from the Freemans because she had told them that she wanted to she wanted to come and be with me and she was informed by the captain in his office that, well, I'm sorry, Allison, but Bill's going to die. There's nothing we can do for him. There's nothing anybody can do for him. So you should just you know, be a good staff member and continue doing your post. And not only that, but she was being harassed by a number of staff. The captain was saying to the whole crew at staff meeting that, you know, she's stirring up, you know, and Allison's causing trouble and, you know, she couldn't even go on the dock without a security guard. Mm -hmm. The primary reason why for that is Bill's wife happens to be a licensed Marine Chief Engineer. And she was considered to be a, a, an extremely valuable staff member to the an ship asset. for its licensure complement. 